Hey everyone, good morning. This is Ed Brzee with Boomer Tech Adventures. I'm here with my two Boomer Tech colleagues, Jill Spencer and Chris Toy. And we'd like to talk with you just a little bit this morning about resetting your creativity and using online services and, and using your technology to, uh, to have a good time and to learn and, um, and to kind of get started again. It's springtime here in Maine. We can see the sunshine. Well, it did a few minutes ago. The snow is mm -hmm. melting. And for me anyway, starting over again with some technology, I'm, I'm tired of the same old emails and texts every day and mindlessly scrolling through um, Facebook. And that's another whole story because I've got three Facebook accounts, but we won't get into that today. <laughs> so you can tell I'm in desperate shape. I need a reset. And just the other day, I'm, I was looking at my computer and I've, I noticed that the um, iPhone photography school course that I had purchased two years ago and had not touched. And I said, darn it, it's time, Ed. Let's, let's start going with that. So I've started that. I've carved out some time every day, a half an hour, 45 minutes. And I'm having a heck of a good time learning about uh, different aspects of photography. And this course existed before the several courses that Boomer Tech Adventures has. And we'll talk about those a little bit later. Uh, but I'm having a good time with my iPhone in my hand. Um, stopping and starting, following along, and learning something new. And I needed a kick in the rear end to kind of get going this spring. So that's one thing that I've started. Jill, how about you? What are you up to? Well, the snow, Ed, is finally gone from my yard. I had two small piles for the longest time. I didn't think they were ever going to go, but they're gone. And so when I look out, I see a lot of leaf-covered um, gardens. Uh, my goal is to have more plants than grass, uh, thinking about the bees and other helpful uh, insects. And so this time of year, I always end up on gardening sites, whether it be a um, merchandiser looking at, you know, what's new in the hybrids or uh, looking at garden designs, which are always fun and which uh, my gardens will never look like because they're very hodgepodge, but I, you know, it's the playground for me. But one of the big things, um, as I get older, I'm thinking, hmm, I really ought to be putting in more flowering shrubs that I'm not going to have to worry about when I'm using my walker. <laughs> Hopefully that's a few years off. <laughs> um, and so uh, the thing about um, flowering shrubs is <laughs> my, my yard is very shady. So I spend a lot of time um, looking or searching flowering shrubs in the shade. And uh, I get some ideas. And of course, a lot of them are not uh, viable in the main winter. Uh, it's still wonderful to look at the flowering shrubs, though. As my sister lives in California, and she's got some beautiful ones, but <laughs> they'll never survive here. Uh, so I found a couple that I think I will go searching for. Uh, we have a good um, place in town called Bushes. Bushes by Bush, <laughs> the last name is Bush, and um, find some good additions to my garden. Along with that, um, I do read a couple of blogs. Uh, one is called The Impatient Gardener, and I think she's out in the Midwest somewhere, but interesting, um, interesting things and th things I've ne never thought about or know anything about. Um, the other uh, one, I, well, two I watch, faithfully on Facebook. Um, one is uh, from a young woman out in um, Eastern Oregon. Uh, her parents own a huge garden center, but she's done a lot of videos. Uh, they're on YouTube, but I watch her on Facebook. She already has a lot of flowers in bloom. But anyway, I've learned a lot from her and she has all sorts of neat uh, projects and um, she's called the Garden Answer. Then there's this guy from Australia who is one, I mean, you see him, he, he does his videos in a grubby t-shirt and shorts, and I don't know what is on his feet, but he is one of these people who just doesn't let anything go to waste. And so he's very much into sustainable living. And so it's fascinating to uh, watch him and learn about how he um, 
takes advantage of everything in his environment to grow um, food and, well, mostly food. Anyway, so that's what <clears throat> this time of year, that's the sort of thing I'm doing. Um, I have great aspirations to um, have a fabulous yard full of uh, flowering plants and bushes. Uh, I still have a long way to go, but it's fun and uh, gets me outside. Another satisfying way to use technology to- Absolutely. Yeah, great, yeah. good, thank you. Chris, what have you got going on? All right. So the um, snow is gone and mud season's over. And um, I had uh, a, on the honeydew list was um, removing some uh, crab apple trees that were in the yard. And I remember that one of the more difficult things to do um, when you're removing trees is to get rid of the, the stump and the, and the roots. So I had heard that, that um, if you could pull straight up, uh, it would be easier to get rid of a stump. So I wondered whether or not I could use a small bottle jack to push the roots the stump up out of the ground. And um, I, before I went out to do the chore, I checked online and lo and behold, it's a thing. And um, I, I found these videos of, of how to do it. So after about you know five or six minutes of seeing some other person do this, I went out and um, I dug a small hole underneath the stump put a rock under it so that you know a flat rock and then i was able to jack the jump jack the stump up out of the hole and and it worked and it i could literally i right could out. hear i could well it's, it's a little harder than that because it comes up then you have to then you know take the take the take it down, take, take the um, bottle jack out, put in another rock to lift it up higher. And so it, it's a little bit of a process, but yeah, you, yeah, I could literally hear the roots getting ripped out. Uh, they, they were like popping as, um, as, as, it, as it cranked it up. And so it was, it was pretty amazing actually. Hmm. Um, wow. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> I don't know. I, I thought it, but I, it was just kind of a strange thought. You know, the, the strange thing is that it's someone else thought of it and, and actually did it. So that was cool. And then the other thing is, is that um, I do a, um, a, uh, a, a YouTube channel with my good friend, Jeff Mao, who, uh, who you guys both know from Education Circle. So uh, we do this thing called Down East Far East Kitchen, mm. where we do Asian fusion. And um, so there's a, there's a, if you know Chinese cooking, there's a well-known um, breakfast food in China called Yo Tiao, and it's fried donuts. And it reminds me of a churro, a Mexican churro, a long, oh. skinny donut. Yes. And um, so we're thinking, how could we make that down east? And have you guys heard of spud nuts? Yeah. Yes. Right? Potato donut. Yeah. Right. So um, I, I figured out a way by looking on the internet how to make Chinese potato donuts. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Were they good? So they were awesome. I, I, I had to eat like four of them just to make sure they were okay. <laughs> of course. To, 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 to test them out. Right. But it, but so, so, so the form is Chinese. You know, I think all donuts are made the same, um, but the form is a Chinese form hmm. and the, uh, <laughs> and the dough for the donut, the batter for the donut is a potato, is potato uh, donut. So, so kind of using the internet to kind of do the fusion thing. Um, there, there, there is no such thing as, ch 
Chinese potato donut. But there <laughs> well, is that, but there is an out. There, there is an out. Right. right. That's great. Right. And and soon online there will be <laughs> Chinese potato donuts. We'll have to post that on our Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Um, we were just in Portland, Maine several weeks ago, and we went to the donut shop that that makes donuts out of potatoes, and I'm blanking on the name. Is it the Holy Donut? The Holy Donut, right. And those yeah, are yeah. amazing donuts. So you might yeah. you might have to talk to them and say, you need to add another line of, <laughs> of donuts. There we go, Chinese donuts. So right. I, have a, I have a question for you. So when you two are using YouTube, which is the second largest um, search engine behind just regular Google, and of course YouTube is owned by Google, so they've kind of cornered the market. But when you use um, YouTube to search for something like jacking up a um, stump or uh, how to do certain gardening kinds of things, what's your criteria because as soon as you do a search, as careful as you've been to narrow it down to what you want, you get, what, hundreds, thousands of, of videos there. How do you decide which ones to look at? Well, so, I... so what I do, what, what I do is, you know, I'll, I'll do the kind of a keyword search. And if I come up with lots of stuff, um, I'll, I'll put it in quotes exactly what i want because right. if you put it in quotes you'll only get exactly what you put in the quote right. and that narrows it way down you know so if you put like getting rid of stumps right i mean it's going to be a really hard hard decision because yeah. i think it you probably come up with you know hundreds of thousands of you know different things in like 0.5 seconds you know, I, I, I kind of love that, um, right. <laughs> that algorithm there. But when I did it, I literally put in using a bottle jack <laughs> to remove stumps. And, yeah. the, you know, the first one that came up was, you know, five or six minutes long. And I said, I have five or six minutes to figure this out. <laughs> okay, so that's an important aspect too, the length. Yeah. Sometimes at least. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jill, how well, about you? Thanks. I have me. true confession here. Um, I have searched YouTube and then spent an inordinate amount of time watching various um, <laughs> YouTube videos, which either go too fast, don't really cover what I want, even if I've tried to be specific. So I have to be honest, when I want to learn how to do something, I go for text. I do a regular oh, Google search. Hmm. Uh, I use what uh, Chris talks about, the um, quotation marks, or I'll use plus something like if I'm looking for something in Maine, I might have the item and then plus Maine. Um, and that brings up both video and text. But I have to be honest, I have spent so much time looking at bad videos that I go for text, where I go step one, step two, step three, step four. But that's me. That, you know, that's how um, watching a video on how to do something is not my favorite way to learn. Ah, interesting. Learning style here. Interesting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. One of the other things that I look for, in addition to um, what you both have mentioned, which are all good is um, I look for the date, obviously. Yeah. And if it's more than a year or two old, usually only a year, then I'll probably not look at it. Um, but the, the length for me is really, really important. I mean, I don't want a 30 minute video, especially yeah. if it's just a simple thing. And for me, if it's something that I need to see, like I'm fixing my dishwasher, repairing the dishwasher, or, or getting my chainsaw out for its biannual use, and I want to review the safety things. I, w I want to make sure that I'm I'm doing it right. So good. Well, I use um, I never realized it until you mentioned it when doing a regular Google search um, in the little menu under the um, yes URL thing yeah. where it says tools. 
I'd never known that. No. So I always now go click tools and go for the most recent. And that was a really handy yeah. trick. Yeah, I do that automatically too. So, yeah, yeah. good, good. Um, let's just mention a couple things. Um, we've, we've, uh, we're going to do some shameless uh, promotion here for Boomer Tech Adventures. We've got a number of things and I'll start out. We have um, a growing list of online courses. Remember, I mentioned that I'm taking a course right now on photography, but Boomer Tech Adventures has our own 11 courses with several photography classes that are very good. Um, introduction to the Mac, introduction to iPhone, introduction to Zoom, and some other, some other uh, really, really good classes. So take a look at um, uh, boomertechadventures.com, our website, and you can see those uh, courses listed there. They're very affordable. They are in um, uh, video form so that you can watch them over and over again. And because we're boomers ourselves, all of us, um, we, have, we go at a pace that's not too fast <laughs> for other boomers and seniors. So those are, that's one thing. Uh, does somebody want to mention Explorama or anything else? Well, before we go to that, I just say on, Club. The courses, on the courses, Good. people can contact us. And remember last week we had a half hour session with a person who was taking our course. And there were a couple of things that she needed further explanation. And that was part of the course that she had one-on-one -on -one help. So, yeah. Good, good point. Thank you. So, Explorama. Explorama. Still, still time to register. This is a great adventure in Kennebunkport, Maine, where you can either cook with Chris Toy of down east, uh, far east uh, fusion cooking. Um, or you can work with Ed and I on using your iPhone, iPad camera to its fullest potential. Uh, we will be doing in a wonderful Airbnb called uh, the Old River House, which is online. Uh, it's in walking distance of Kennebunkport, so you can go and spend some money down in the shops. Um, and you can either stay at the uh, inn, or it's not an inn, stay at the Old River House, or you can find your own accommodations. But whichever level you sign up for, you get all your meals, which is pretty good. So the people who sign up to work with Chris will be cooking for those of us who sign up with Ed and I. And uh, Chris has done this sort of thing with uh, a couple of water colorists. And they have a fabulous time, and I'm anticipating we will too. Yep. And um, you don't you don't have to stick with one or the other. That's right. So if you know if you want to spend some time learning cooking, you can do that. Uh, but if you also want to uh, learn some photography uh, or to manage your 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 images, um, you can you can do that. So you can switch back and forth. So you don't have to feel like you're always stuck in the kitchen or that you never get to go into the kitchen. Yeah. Right. So you, you, can, you can do that as well. Um, another thing that uh, we'd like you to keep in mind is our, um, our Boomer Tech Adventures Club. And um, what's great about uh, the, the BTA Club is uh, not only do you have access to us, you, you can literally contact us and we'll arrange, you know, a face-to-face, -face, you know, online meeting with you to answer some questions that you may have. Uh, but on top of that, you will also get access, you'll get one free course mm -hmm. um, for, for signing up. So um, if you want to learn more about your technology, if you want to be guaranteed to have three experts at your beck and call um, by email, by text, by Zoom, uh, that's all included in the BTA club membership. And all the information can be found at our website, www 
boomertechadventures.com. And uh, there's a menu across the top and you just click on the, the piece that you would like to know more of. Good, thanks everybody. Let's, let's, uh, we'll wrap it up right here. It's springtime, uh, things are growing, life is, life is good and uh, make positive use of your technology. Thanks, Jill, Chris, and we'll see you on Ask BTA the next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.